Minerals. Minerals are formed by 1. Crystallisation from a mount. Some minerals like quartz, feldspar, mica, olivine and augite are formed when a molten rock cools and solidifies. As the temperature decreases, the atoms in the liquid begin to arrange themselves into a regular repeating pattern called a crystal structure. Over time, the crystals grow larger and interlock with each other, forming a solid rock. Number two, metamorphic recrystallization. When rocks are subjected to high temperatures and or pressures, they can undergo metamorphism, a process that can change their mineral composition and texture without the rock melting. During metamorphism, some minerals like calcite can recrystallize, meaning their atoms rearrange into a new crystal structure. These new crystals are often larger and more perfect than the original ones, giving the rock a new appearance and texture. In this way, clay minerals may recrystallize to form garnet. Number three, crystallization from solution in evaporating water. Some minerals like halite, rock salt, are formed when water containing dissolved minerals evaporates, leaving behind crystals. As the water evaporates, the concentration of dissolved minerals increases until they reach a saturation point and begin to precipitate out of solution. Over time, the crystals grow larger and can form thick layers of ore deposits called evaporites. Number four, crystallization as cement from flowing pore waters. Minerals like quartz and calcite can form as cements that hold sedimentary rocks together. When water flows through sedimentary rocks, it can dissolve minerals and carry them along. As the water evaporates or becomes saturated, the minerals can precipitate out and cement the sediment particles together. This process can create durable rocks like sandstone and limestone. Number five, crystallization from hydrothermal fluids. Hydrothermal fluids are hot, mineral rich fluids that circulate through the Earth's crust. When these fluids meet cooler rocks or open spaces like veins and faults, the minerals can precipitate out and form veins or deposits. Gang minerals like quartz and calcite are often present in these deposits, while all minerals like hematite and galena are valuable resources that can be extracted for use in industry. Modern laboratory techniques like scanning electron microscopy, SEM, and electron microprobe analysis can be used to image mineral samples on a small scale and determine their chemistry. Scanning electron microscopy, SEM. SEM is a type of microscope that uses a focused beam of electrons to create images of mineral samples at very high magnifications. Unlike optical microscopes, which use light, SEM can produce images with much higher resolution, allowing scientists to see individual crystals and features on the surface of minerals up to 1 million times the magnification. Electron microprobe analysis. Electron microprobe analysis is a technique that uses an electron beam to determine the elements making up a mineral sample. The microprobe uses a focused beam of electrons to excite the atoms in the sample, causing them to emit characteristic X-rays. By measuring the energy and intensity of these X-rays, the microprobe can determine the type and amount of elements present in the sample. Together, SEM and electron microprobe analysis can provide valuable information about the structure and composition of mineral samples at a very small scale. This information can help geologists understand how minerals form, how they interact with their environment, and how they can be used as resources. <laughs>